Number 8. Ava Kai Lee Greek TV presenter turned politician Ava Kai Lee became a vice president of the European Parliament in 2014 at the age of 44. In addition to achieving this and other political milestones at an impressively young age, she lived an enviable jet-setting lifestyle. Coupled with her good looks and her seemingly happy relationship and family life, Kylie appeared to have it all. But her career took a major downturn in December of 2022 when she was arrested by Belgian federal police based on her suspected ties to organized crime and corruption, including money laundering. As a member of parliament, Kylie would have normally enjoyed the privilege of parliamentary immunity, but she fell under suspicion during a separate investigation and was found to be caught in flagrante delicto or in the act, which gave the authorities power to override the legal protections that are typically afforded to someone in her position. During the investigation into Kylie's alleged crimes, law enforcement raided 16 properties. They found bags full of cash and other evidence suggesting that Kylie may have accepted bribes on behalf of Qatar. She is now facing criminal charges alongside three co-defendants, including her longtime partner Francesco Giorgi. For nearly a year and a half following her arrest, Kylie was held at a jail in Brussels. She's currently on house arrest pending the outcome of the case. In early 2024, amid the ongoing Qatar Gate scandal, she was charged in a separate case for allegedly misusing €150,000 in public funds in a kickback scheme. Her parliamentary immunity was also waived in this case, and she could face up to 15 years in prison on the new charges alone if she's found guilty. Kylie continues to maintain her innocence despite her mounting legal troubles. Number 7. Elena Udreya Former Romanian presidential candidate Elena Udreya held positions in the national government from 2008 to 2012. Her career fell apart in April of 2015, when the then 41-year-old was accused of accepting seven figures worth of bribes while serving as the country's tourism minister. Udreya was indicted on corruption and abuse of power charges along with seven co-defendants, including former economy minister Ian Arriton. According to prosecutors, Udreya and several others sought payments from private companies in exchange for guaranteed contracts for public projects. Some of the ill-gotten funds were reportedly used to support Udreya's political party. The arrest wasn't necessarily surprising, given Romania's status as one of Europe's most corrupt countries. But Udreya adamantly denied the allegations and announced her intentions to fight her case to the fullest possible extent, claiming that the charges were politically motivated. In early 2017, Udreya was convicted of bribery and abuse of power. She was sentenced to six years in prison but fled the country and sought asylum in Costa Rica after unsuccessfully appealing her case. In the meantime, her sentence was upheld by a Romanian high court. Udreya returned to Romania in 2019 after her sentence was suspended following yet another court hearing. Prosecutors continued to pursue the case, prompting Udreya to flee to Bulgaria, and in 2022, her prison sentence was reinstated. She was extradited to Romania and continued to fight her case from behind bars, but her appeal was ultimately rejected. In 2024, tax agents put a hotel that Udreya once owned with her ex-husband up for sale, indicating that the authorities are possibly in the process of liquidating the disgraced former politician's assets. Number 6. Nicole Mitchell while responding to a reported burglary at a residence in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota early one morning in April of 2024, police came face to face with 49-year-old state senator and Air Force veteran Nicole Mitchell. The home belonged to Mitchell's stepmother, but Mitchell allegedly had no reason to be there. After being found in the basement shortly before 5 o'clock in the morning wearing all black and with a flashlight in her hand, she was arrested on suspicion of felony burglary. According to court documents, Mitchell told officers that she had just arrived at the residence before adding, clearly I'm not good at this. She reportedly claimed that she was at the house to collect some of her late father's belongings that her stepmother had refused to return to her, including family photos, a flannel shirt and cremated ashes. Inside Mitchell's backpack, police found a laptop belonging to her stepmother, who denied giving the device to the senator. In addition to facing a burglary charge, Mitchell has fallen under the scrutiny of her colleagues, some of whom have called on her to resign. She announced through her attorneys that she has no plans to step down from her post, and she refused to answer questions during an ethics hearing. 
The case is ongoing, along with a separate lawsuit demanding the release of body cam footage of Mitchell's arrest. Number 5. St. Louis vs. Bar PM In December of 2023, a police SUV ran a red light, swerved past a parked car, and crashed into a popular gay bar in St. Louis, Missouri's Carondelet neighborhood. The vehicle struck the business, Bar PM, at about half past midnight as one of the owners, Chad Morris, and an employee were closing up for the night. After hitting the building, the officers arrested Morris for assault and resisting arrest, claiming he became aggressive and shoved one of the cops during a confrontation over the accident. Morris denied the allegations and the charge was eventually reduced after bystander footage called the officers' conduct into question. But the problems between the bar's owners and local officials continued and appear to be ongoing even today. According to an official police report, the police SUV was occupied by a pair of rookie probation officers and the driver overcorrected after losing control of the vehicle. But Morris's husband and business partner, James Pence, claimed that the officers told him they had swerved to avoid hitting a dog. During a subsequent investigation, the officer behind the wheel admitted to being distracted while changing the radio station in the moments leading up to the collision. Shortly after the crash, Morris, Pence, and their landlord received a letter from city officials threatening to condemn the building for structural damage that was caused during the accident. A month and a half later, Building Commissioner Frank Oswald reassured the owners and landlord that the city had no intentions of condemning the property. In May of 2024, Morris and Pence filed a lawsuit against the city of St. Louis and the two police officers involved in the collision. The couple are accusing one of the officers of assaulting and illegally detaining them in an attempt to cover up the cause of the accident. A separate lawsuit filed by the same attorney accuses the same officer of assaulting a man who was detained at the local jail. The lawyer who filed the cases claims that the officer has a history of abusive conduct towards civilians. In the meantime, a police spokesperson offered no response, citing the department's policy of not commenting on pending litigation. The outcomes of the cases remains to be seen. Number 4. Larry Householder in July of 2020, Ohio became entangled in the biggest bribery corruption scandal in state history, courtesy of former House Speaker Larry Householder. Federal prosecutors accused the crooked career politician of accepting $60 million in bribes from their Akron-based company, First Energy, in exchange for a $1.3 billion bailout to save two failing nuclear plants. The bribe money was filtered through a non-profit in what prosecutors described as a clear attempt to evade campaign finance laws. During his trial in early 2023, Householder claimed that he barely knew the first energy executives he was accused of doing dirty business with, despite ample evidence showing that he spent considerable time socializing with them. Prosecutors were able to prove that Householder attended sports games with the executives, rode on their private jets, and hung out in their mansions. According to federal authorities, some of the ill-gotten funds were used to elect Republican politicians who voted to make Householder the state House Speaker. Householder used an estimated $500,000 on home repairs and credit card bills, while tens of millions were spent on getting First Energy's bailout bill passed and squashing a civilian-led repeal of the legislation. In March of 2023, Householder was found guilty of racketeering. Three months later, he was sentenced to a 20-year maximum prison term. The 64-year-old is now facing 10 state-level charges, including five counts of tampering with records, two counts of aggravated theft, and one count each of theft in office, telecommunications fraud, and money laundering. The state case is ongoing as Householder appeals his federal conviction. Number 3. Amy Hadley vs. South Bend Police In June of 2022, police officers surrounded the South Bend, Indiana home of Amy Hadley and shouted orders for anyone inside to come out immediately with their hands in the air. The only person who was home at the time was Amy's teenage son, who was playing video games and had no idea why the residence was being raided. He obeyed the officer's commands to come outside, at which point one of the cops said, that's not him. According to a lawsuit Hadley later filed against the police department, law enforcement had mistakenly tracked a fugitive to her house, despite the wanted criminal having never stepped foot on the property. And despite knowing that Amy's son was not the person they were looking for, the officers handcuffed him and took him down to the station for questioning. 
In the meantime, several officers remained at the scene for nearly an hour while yelling for the fugitive to exit the home. They allegedly deployed dozens of tear gas grenades inside the residence before storming into the house, causing extensive damage to the walls, windows, furniture, security cameras, and other items, including the family's electronics and other personal belongings. Hadley's homeowner's insurance only covered a portion of the tens of thousands of dollars worth of damages, which was what prompted her decision to sue. She didn't challenge the validity of the search warrant, but instead demanded compensation for the portion of the ruined property that her insurance did not cover. The case appears to be ongoing. Number 2. The Death of Dexter Wade 37-year-old Dexter Wade was last seen leaving his family's Jackson, Mississippi home with a friend in March of 2023 after an argument with his mother about a broken window. His mother, Betterston Wade, reported him missing nine days later. The police told Betterston that they were unable to find Dexter, whose whereabouts remained a mystery for the next seven months. Finally, in October of 2023, Betterston learned that her son had been fatally struck by an off-duty police officer's vehicle less than an hour after leaving her home the night she last saw him. Dexter was crossing an interstate highway at the time of the collision. His body lay in a morgue for months afterward, despite authorities being aware of his identity and the fact that his family was looking for him. By the time Betterston was informed of Dexter's whereabouts, he had been buried in a remote potter's field behind a prison farm. His grave was marked by a number, 672, rather than a name. When Betterston reported Dexter missing, her family was in the process of suing the police for her brother's wrongful death at the hands of an officer. The officer was convicted of manslaughter, but the agency denied responsibility for the man's death. Given the circumstances, Betterston did not have high hopes that law enforcement would do much about her missing son, but she never imagined that the police would identify and bury Dexter's body without telling her, especially since she kept in regular contact with the agency after filing the missing person's report. According to NBC News, authorities confirmed Dexter's identity and received information about his next of kin within a few days of his death. In the meantime, Betterston searched frantically for Dexter and worked tirelessly to circulate his photo and information about his disappearance. It's unclear why so much time passed before she learned the truth and whether or not this was done on purpose, but she and Dexter's other loved ones are understandably devastated and outraged by the situation, and they want answers and justice. Betterston sued the city of Jackson for the shortcomings surrounding Dexter's death. According to the most recent available updates, the cases regarding both Dexter and her brother were ongoing amid negotiations surrounding a possible settlement. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. Number one, immunity for accused crooked cops. In 2013, police in Fresno, California raided Mika Jessup and Britton Ashijan, who were suspected of running an illegal gambling operation. The officers who carried out the search noted on an inventory report that they had seized $50,000 in cash. Jessup and Ashijan, who were never charged with any crimes in connection with the investigation, claimed that the police actually took over $150,000 in cash, along with $125,000 worth of rare coins. The men accused the officers of pocketing the difference between the amount noted on the report and the actual amount of cash and valuables, amounting to a theft of more than $226,000. But when Jessup and Dashajan tried to sue the police, they were met with counterclaims of qualified immunity. This refers to a public servant's protection from legal consequences for violating someone's constitutional rights, as long as that right has not been clearly established by similar previous court cases. In other words, a plaintiff who sues a public servant is required to prove that their constitutional rights were violated and that their rights were clearly established at the time the violation occurred. Under court doctrine, a right is clearly established only if it would be clear to a reasonable officer that his conduct was unlawful. In an unusual and surprising decision, a circuit court judge concluded that the officers involved in the raid were entitled to qualified immunity because there is no clearly established law holding that officers violate someone's constitutional rights when they steal property that was seized under a search warrant. Long story short, Jessup and Ashajan were left with no options for pursuing justice, and the officers accused of stealing from them walked away scot-free. Number 10. Walter O'Grodd 
Walter Ograd spent 28 years behind bars before finally being released from prison in 2020, when a Pennsylvania judge vacated his conviction in the murder of a young four-year-old girl. This is obviously a horrifying thing to happen. Just imagine spending 28 years behind bars as a child murderer when you didn't actually murder the child. By the time he got out, Walter was 55 years old. He managed to escape his conviction with the help of the exact same Philadelphia District Attorney's Office that prosecuted him back in 1988. So how did this happen? Well, in 1988, jurors at his trial decided to convict him for the murder of Barbara Jean Horn, who'd been found dead inside of a cardboard TV box near Walter's home in North Philadelphia. It didn't help that Walter had given a confession for the crime. However, prosecutors now believe that he was coerced into a false confession. It was thanks to DNA evidence found at the crime scene being reviewed earlier in 2020 that Walter finally got released. As for the identity of the true murderer, that's still a mystery. We may never know who actually killed this innocent little girl. Number 9. Richard Phillips Meet the man who spent more years behind bars than any other wrongfully imprisoned human in America. His name is Richard Phillips, and he spent 45 years in jail for a crime that he never committed. When a judge finally declared him a free man, the first thing Richard did was go for groceries. According to CNN, Richard was amazed to discover just how many different types of orange juice are now being sold in grocery stores. But this is just one revelation that Richard is going to have to deal with after spending 45 years of his life isolated in prison. Even though his murder conviction was thrown out by a judge in 2018, Philip was already 72 years old. He spent the majority of his life imprisoned for never committing a crime. This itself is a crime against humanity. But what exactly was Richard Phillips charged with? As an auto worker in Detroit back in the 1970s, Philip was charged with the murder of a man named Gregory Harris, who had been dragged out of his car and then shot to death in June of 1971. It was the testimony of the victim's brother-in-law that led to Philip's arrest. Apparently, Richard Phillips had met with another man named Richard Polumbo at a bar to discuss how they had murdered Gregory Harris. Both men were convicted and Phillips was sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. It wasn't until 2010 when Richard Palumbo, the other man arrested, finally told the parole board that he killed Gregory Harris along with Gregory's brother-in-law and that they had pinned it on Richard Phillips even though he had nothing to do with it. It then took four more years for the evidence to be revealed, and even more years after that for Richard to finally be released. What do you think should be done to reimburse these people for their wrongful imprisonment? What kind of reparations are appropriate? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. And then don't forget to subscribe to Worldlist if you haven't already for more exciting videos just like this one. Number 8. Robert Du Boise Robert Du Boise also spent a shocking amount of time behind bars for a murder he didn't commit. The Tampa local went to prison for murder when he was just 18 years old. He then spent 37 years behind bars before eventually being exonerated. When he was released, he was 55 years old. He spent his entire adult life incarcerated for a crime he didn't commit. Judge Christopher Nash finally vacated Robert's life sentence and removed his name from the sex offender registry. Apparently, this all occurred when it was learned that his conviction could no longer be supported by the evidence available. But according to Fox News, there hadn't really been much evidence against Robert in the first place. The prosecutors had based their entire case on a testimony from an unreliable source and a bite mark. And it was the bite mark that ultimately sent Robert to prison in 1983 for the murder of Barbara Grahams. And it was also the bite mark almost 40 years later that finally set him free. It turned out that the bite mark should not have been enough to convict Robert for murder. The bite mark was too unreliable. It's now considered junk science. And even after spending almost 40 years behind bars, Robert maintained his innocence. All of this helped him finally be released. And hopefully he can spend the remaining years of his life with some semblance of peace. Number 7. John Thompson Next among the wrongfully imprisoned is John Thompson, a native of New Orleans who was wrongly arrested for an armed robbery and a completely unrelated murder way back in 1984. But here's where things get gruesome. According to the New Orleans Historical, the prosecutors had intentionally secreted any evidence that suggested John Thompson was innocent during the trial. This included blood evidence that directly proved John was not the man responsible for the armed robbery. Because of the exclusion of the evidence, John Thompson was convicted and sentenced to death in 1985. Thankfully, just a month before John Thompson was due to be executed back in 1999, a defense investigator discovered the blood evidence and the evidence of the cover-up. 
The conviction was thrown out immediately, and John was taken off death row. But even though his life was saved, he was still in prison. It took another three years for prosecutors to throw out his murder conviction. He had a retrial in 2003, and a New Orleans jury took less than an hour to acquit him of the murder for which he had nearly been killed. John Thompson walked out of the courtroom a free man, and probably more than a little angry with the justice system. Number 6. Ricky Davis Ricky Davis is yet another innocent man who spent way too long in prison for a murder he didn't commit. After spending 15 years locked up behind bars like some sort of animal, Ricky Davis was finally released. But just what exactly happened to this California man to get him stuck in such a miserable situation? It's all about the interrogation techniques. According to ABC News, Ricky Davis was initially convicted in 2005 for the murder of Jane Hilton because of insanely aggressive interrogations that led to a forced confession from his girlfriend at the time. Transcripts from 1999 showed that a detective urged Ricky Davis's girlfriend to confess until she finally did. Murder charges were then filed against Davis and his girlfriend of the time. She testified against him, and Davis was sentenced to 16 years to life in state prison. However, he maintained his innocence throughout the sentence. He was only released because of new evidence that came to light. DNA samples proved that Ricky Davis is innocent, and since his release, a new man has been placed in custody for the original murder. Number 5. Ricky Jackson the award for man who spent the second longest amount of time in prison for a crime that he didn't commit goes to Ricky Jackson, who spent 39 years in jail for killing a man named Harold Franks outside of a convenience store. According to the police, a pair of assailants had thrown acid into Harold's face, beat him, shot him a few times, then stole around $425 from him. Ricky Jackson was elsewhere at the time of the crime, but that didn't stop detectives from collecting statements from witnesses who claimed Jackson was present at the crime, and that he even fired the gun that killed the man. And even though the shaky witness failed to identify Ricky Jackson in a police lineup, Ricky was convicted of murder anyway. In 1975, Jackson and a few of his friends were sentenced to die by the electric chair. In 1977, Ricky Jackson had his sentence reduced to life in prison on a technicality. The year after that, capital punishment in Ohio was obliterated. He spent the majority of his life sitting in prison, and it wasn't until 2011 when a Cleveland magazine published an article about Jackson's conviction and how totally ridiculous and implausible the testimony that condemned him was that some headway began being made for his release. Some very special people took interest in the article. The original witness behind the conviction came forward and rescinded his testimony from 1975, and three years later in 2014, prosecutors dismissed charges against all three of the original convicts, including Ricky Jackson. Number 4. Three Men Cleared this unbelievable story is about three men from Maryland who spent 36 years together in prison for a crime they didn't commit in 1984. Alfred Chestnut, Ransom Watkins, and Andrew Stewart were only teenagers when they were wrongfully sentenced to serve life in prison for murdering another Baltimore teenager. In 2019, they were finally released from prison after a judge cleared their convictions and all charges involved were dropped. Circuit Court Judge Charles Peters apologized to the grown men, but said he also would understand if his words didn't mean much after the trio's horrible ordeal. According to NBC News, the three men were arrested in November of 1983, when a 14-year-old boy named DeWitt Duckett was shot in the neck while walking to class at his Baltimore school. At the time, the three boys became immediate suspects, and it honestly didn't take much to convict them. This is made even more disturbing by the fact that police reports from the time of the murder showed witnesses telling police that a suspect had killed the boy, fled the scene, dumped the gun, and got away. But the authorities chose to ignore the witnesses and instead blamed the trio for the murder. However, the real murderer will never be convicted since he was shot to death in 2002. Number 3. Walter Forbes Imagine being released from prison after almost 40 years and then being sent directly to a COVID-19 quarantine. It seems like a nightmare come to life, and yet that's exactly what happened to Walter Forbes from Michigan when at the age of 63, he was finally freed from prison after being proved innocent for the crime that had originally landed him behind bars. Walter had spent most of his life incarcerated and had long dreamed of being free. Then in 2020, when Walter was finally exonerated, the earth was in the middle of a pandemic. He was freed from jail, then sent directly to quarantine, where he was forced to spend his first days as a free man not quite so free. 
It's a little ironic, but at least Walter is no longer behind bars. As for the original incarceration, Walter was convicted in 1983 when a witness told a jury that him and two other men torched an apartment house in Jackson, Michigan, killing the occupant inside. For his crime, Walter was imprisoned for 38 years. The conviction wasn't tossed out until new evidence was brought forward that supported grounds for a new trial. There was a two-day hearing, new evidence was introduced, and Walter was found innocent. Number 2. Joseph Webster A Tennessee man named Joseph Webster walked free in 2020 after serving nearly 15 years behind bars. In 2006, Webster was tried for first-degree murder in the 1998 slaying of Leroy Owens, after Owens was chased down and beaten to death with a cinder block. Eight years after Owens was killed, Webster was forced into the courtroom, where he was found guilty by a jury of his supposed peers, mostly because of a false witness testimony that directly identified him as the murderer. Joseph Webster was then sentenced to life in prison. So how did he get free? It was all thanks to a special unit formed in 2016 to review wrongful convictions. Joseph Webster was the first to apply for a review of his case, as he maintained his innocence throughout his imprisonment. It soon became clear that the witness testimony was nonsense, and also that there was a serious lack of evidence. Luckily, the unit was able to exonerate Joseph Webster, and he has since been reunited with his mother and his sons. Number 1. Louis Vargas Louis Vargas served 16 years in prison after he was convicted for unspeakable violence against three women, all of whom had been victims of the so-called teardrop rapist. But even after getting charged with such inhumane crimes, Lewis continued to claim he was innocent. He even reached out to the California Innocence Project to try and overturn the verdict, saying that after he was arrested, more crimes were perpetrated that were identical to the ones he was convicted of. In essence, it was like if a very unique serial killer was supposedly arrested, but those same unique killings continued to happen. It was obvious Lewis didn't do it. In the end, it was a good thing Lewis was able to get a great attorney. His attorneys requested a new series of DNA testing, and this resulted in Lewis being released from prison and cleared of the crimes. And if you've never heard of the teardrop rapist, it's time you became aware of this particular dangerous man and learned to recognize his unique appearance. Since 1996, this villain has been linked to more than 30 violent and despicable sexual assaults all across Los Angeles. The reason for the name is that the suspect apparently has a teardrop tattoo that is extremely distinct. But perhaps even more disturbing than Lewis being imprisoned for a crime he didn't commit is the fact that the terrifying culprit is still believed to be at large, on the loose, and very dangerous. Thanks for watching. Would you rather a police officer steal $50,000 and never see any justice, or have a cop car accidentally drive into your house? Let me know in the comments and hit subscribe while you're at it. See you soon. Bye.